When it comes time to choose an engine for your light sport aircraft, do you often wish there were more choices available? Well, maybe yes and maybe no. But today we're going to look at another provider of power plants for our light aircraft. They've been around for a while, but maybe you haven't heard of them before. Let's take a listen. Um, I'm Mark Kettering, and I'm the owner of Manta Flight Systems. And we build a line of engines we call Aero Momentum um, AM13, AM15, and we're going to start with an AM10 in the near future. The 13 is a 1300cc, uh, 100 horsepower, about 170 pounds, and the AM15 is 1500ccs, 188 pounds, and 117 horsepower. Uh, they're all based on Suzuki, uh, kind of unique to the um, converters of automated, automotive based engines for use in aircraft. We start with 100% brand new engines. Uh, our 1300, we buy a factory long block, brand new, and for the 15, we buy a factory bare block and all factory and OEM uh, parts and assemble the engine. Uh, this is a 1300 here. Uh, we, of course, build our own gearbox, um, our own accessories to it. This one's upright. We also build the 1500 and both engines, the AM13 and M15, in either upright or a 70 degree slant configuration to fit into a normal cowling of a tractor aircraft. Uh, the engines are full electronically controlled, modern FADEC. Um, using Bosch components, uh, it's wasted spark with plugs on every other coil, uh, fuel injection, uh, uses throttle position, manifold pressure, temperature, uh, we can go closed loop with the No2 sensor, uh, has a NOx sensor, uh, so it can run on basically any grade of fuel from uh, 80 octane, which isn't recommended, the power will be reduced. We recommend about 90 octane or better. Another thing that's unique about us compared to the other auto converting companies is, uh, or the aircraft engine companies that are using an automobile engine as a base. First off, the most important is that we're brand new, not used, and I'll emphasize that a few times. Um, but the other thing is we're willing to sell any part to you. We'll sell you your, the coil packs, or the throttle body, or the sensors, or a bare block, or a long block, or pistons, or rods, or, or gearboxes, or gearbox mount, or our engine mounts. Any part is available on our webpage. Uh, so you don't have to buy a whole package from us. Obviously, we're very happy to sell you a whole package, but we're happy to sell you an intake manifold if that's what you want, or a gearbox. Uh, talking about our gearbox, uh, this is our design. We designed it for 210 horsepower with a 2 to 1 safety factor. It actually can handle 1,200 foot-pounds of torque, uh, peak torque. Um, we have a rubber, can't really see it in there, but between the flywheel and the gearbox there is a rubber damper uh, to help remove any sort of harmonics or uh, vibration between the two. Our pattern of our flange for our propeller flange, we have a Rotax 75 millimeter drilled and tapped Rotax 4 inch that has to use lugs, but we have the lugs available again on our website or if you request it with the package, and also SAE 1. So you have a choice of what sort of propeller to use. We use gear oil in our gearbox, we use engine oil in the engine. The AM13 being 100 horsepower is a great replacement for the Rotax 912. Uh, it's a little heavier, but compared to the carbureted version, it uses about 20% less fuel. So you'll kind of make up the weight difference in the amount of fuel that you're going to burn. Um, we're at 170 pounds, the Rotax claims 135, but you've got to add and pay for their oil tank, their oil cooler, their alternator kit, um, their engine mount ears, uh, all of that stuff ends up adding weight and cost. So by the time you're done, our 170 compares about to the Rotax 912, it was really about 160 
so we're 10 pounds heavier, but we'll also be using about 5 pounds an hour less for fuel. Uh, it's also a great replacement for O200s. We've had a, custom, a couple of customers that had the Q2 that had an O200, so Q200, and this engine mounts, or the slant version, very well, um, basically because the Q200 has a flat firewall, a couple of hard points on it, we can bolt up to those hard points. No engine mount is actually even needed. Uh, the 1500, our AM15 is 117 horse and 188 pounds. That's more comparable to the Rotax 914. Uh, we're a little better horsepower and our horsepower is rated continuous. The 914 is only uh, 95 horsepower continuous. The 115 horsepower rating is for five minutes, I believe. So we have more real life usable power, uh, especially for higher crews. Of course, it's not turbo normalized, so we don't have that advantage. But weight is very comparable, and of course, the cost is maybe one third or one quarter. Uh, it's our 1500 is also a very good uh, replacement for the Lycoming O235. Um, O235 is a great engine, but again, we'll save fuel um, and save weight a significant amount of weight over the O235. We also have um, in development what we're calling the AM10. The AM10 is a little three-cylinder and the all-up weight is going to be 139 pounds and it's 75 horsepower. This is kind of a replacement for the Rotax 582. Uh, 582 has been around for a long time and has a mixed reputation, I guess, um, but a 300-hour TBO, a notorious, notoriously thirsty, and not necessarily known to be reliable um, for most users. Some people love it. Uh, right now, there's basically no other engine that can replace a 582. A 582's with electric start is about 113 pounds. Uh, so 139 is a significant increase, but the 582 is so thirsty that if both engines are producing the same 50 horsepower, our engine uses nine pounds an hour less fuel. So you really quickly can uh, eliminate that weight difference or by just carrying less fuel. Okay. Uh, as I was saying, that both engines can be upright. Uh, this is, happens to be the upright configuration where it uses a bed mount at the basically the four bottom corners. Most of the customers that are using a bed mount do so in a pusher configuration, such as a weight shift trike, uh, powered parachute, some of the Aventuras and Sea Rays we've um, put in the upright version. Uh, even some tractor ones, like a, we have one customer doing a early Tiger Moth replica, and the very original Tiger, Tiger Moth had an upright inline four. The low profile slant fits in the cowling space of a Lycoming or a Continental. The width and um, Height is actually about the same as a Rotax, but uh, certain parts of it protrude out differently than a Rotax. We chose the Suzuki engine for a few reasons. One is Suzuki um, sells their engines to a variety of other car manufacturers, um, but more importantly, uh, which allows us to buy 100% brand new engines. My background um, is I been involved in electrical engineering and aerospace engineering. I have a degree, master's um, from UMass in electronics and uh, bachelor's and a master's, and a master's in aerospace engineering from Cal Poly. Uh, after that, I worked for a few years for various kit plane companies, um, worked for Harvard University and NASA and a couple other places. The company, after it was founded, uh, we started doing uh, this engine and jet boats starting about 11 years ago now, 10 years ago, and we installed a bunch of jet boats, and in a jet boat it's pretty much high RPM. We generally propped it for about 6,000 RPMs or even a little higher, so we got a lot of experience with this motor and, and jet boats. Then we went to selling it for air boats. Uh, the reason why we stopped selling it for jet boats was because in this country 
even though the engine is certified to a higher standard than what is required, the EPA didn't um, accept that certification. So we sold it for airboats where they have an exemption, um, the EPA exemption, or our customers have the EPA exemption. In airboats, we have over 100 installed. We have well over 20,000 hours in the fleet. The highest time engine, uh, one of our 1300s, has gone over 4,000 hours. And the 4,000 hours was in a commercial operation where they're actually um, dragging nets. So it's a very high power, you know, full throttle for half an hour at a time. Uh, and I'm talking 100% power for half an hour at a time. And the engine went over 4,000 hours before um, generally lack of maintenance um, killed it. But 4,000 hours is a huge amount with our 1,500 hour TBO. Uh, after that time, that customer happened to just buy another long block and <laughs> transferred all the external boxes and parts, including the gearbox. And they probably have another 1,000 hours on it since then. Um, in aircraft, we've delivered I'm not sure the exact number, but over 30 and sold over 40 engines for aircraft use. We've delivered them for use on weight shift trikes. A couple of our long blocks were incorporated into trick trikes, uh, full engines into other trikes down in Australia, um, airtime Calypso, Signet, uh, six shooter, powered parachutes, um, oh, a bunch of them in Aventuras. Two of them now are in. Sea rays, uh, two are going into KISS TR1s, 